Good morning, friends. Take a comfortable seat on your yoga mat, sit up nice and tall through the spine. Take a moment to close your eyes or turn your gaze low. And doing that welcome breath, body, mind to this 45 minute all levels yoga practice. This month, centering our focus around the mantra, witness yourself. As tends to happen, set an intention, and it starts to just come at you from different angles, some plan, some not. In the past few days, everything I've picked up, everything I've read, everything that I've listened to has led me back to the word focus. In particular, to focus on your habits. Focus on the habits that you don't even realize are happening. Meaning the breath happens without you noticing, without you focusing on it. But as you focus in here, See not only the inhale and the exhale, but focus on the moment in between the inhale and exhale. Focus on the moment in between the exhale and the next inhale. before we get the body involved today. Nice full inhale from belly through the ribs to the chest. See that pause and then exhale from chest through ribs down to the belly, a pause at the bottom. Back into the breath. A pause, back into the exhale. Take two more rounds just on the focus of breath here. I want you to add your arms as the movement of your breath. Inhale, lift the arms up. Palms come together for that little pause. And then exhale, release the hands down by the side. Try to take the fingertips all the way to touch the ground. Little pause. Do it again. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, release. Once more, inhale, lift. Twist in one direction, twist in the second direction. Keep those momentary pauses going between movement and breath. And 
And then as you come back to the center, switch around to all fours. And here in cat and cow, inhale, drop belly down, pull the chest through, eyes and tailbone up and hold. And then exhale, press hands and knees down, round the back, drop the head, hold. Again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips, pedal out the feet. Now the mind might start to drop away from the specifics of the breath. I keep trying to loop it back throughout this practice. A couple more breaths here and downward facing dog. And then step the right foot forward into your low lunge, right hand up to the sky in your twist. Lower the right hand back down to the mat and shift your hips back and forth. Straighten and bend the legs as you do so. Good. Lower your left knee now down to the mat. Bring both hands to the front thigh. Lift the torso up. And go into a twist here with the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Place the hands together, point the right elbow up to the sky. Stay back knee down or lift it up. Lower the back knee down and then untwist and step it all the way backwards to downward facing dog. Second side, step the left foot forward into your low lunge. Lift the left hand high for the lower twist first. And then set the hand down and shift the legs back and forth. Create a little communication between the movement and the breath. And then lower the back knee down to the floor. Walk both hands up to the front thigh. Get really tall in the spine at first. And then coming at the twist from that back knee down. So right elbow to the outside of the thigh. What this allows for me, and maybe the same for you, is to get maybe a little bit of a deeper hug into that twist first. And then Lift the back knee up only when you're ready and if you're ready. So if the habit is usually to come into the pose from knee up, giving it a little twist and seeing what you notice. Take it out of the twist, go all the way back to downward facing dog. And then walk your hands backwards to your feet. Walk the hands to the feet, back end of the mat. Keep a nice deep knee bend here. Let the head really hang. Hold on to your elbows and sway a little bit from side to side. Ragdoll pose. And slowly roll all the way up to standing. 
Shoulders up and back a couple of times. Good, and then forward and down. From mountain pose here at the back end of the mat, nice broad across the chest. Go back to that focus, centering on breath. And then add the arm movement, inhale, lift up, make the palms touch in that little pause. Exhale, release, and swan dive all the way down. Make the fingertips touch. And that pause before the next breath. And then walk the hands out to downward facing dog. Shift in hips and shoulders to come forward to plank. And lower flat down to the mat. Cobra, peel the chest up, press down through the feet, squeeze the glutes. Safety and protection in the low back there. Change to child's pose. Press your hips back to your heels. Threaded child's pose or twisted child's pose. Take the right arm under the left. Still sitting the hips way back. Unthread and take the left arm under the right. And unthread. As you come through all fours, step your right foot forward into a low lunge. Lift up the back leg, back knee. Here we're going to go right into more of a bind. Drop your right shoulder down to the inside of your thigh so that the right arm can go underneath and try to fly both hands up, holding your balance there. Bring the hands back down. Left heel to the ground. Come up to warrior two. Lift the torso upright. Here in Warrior Two, still deep bend in that front thigh, the right knee. Look out over the front fingertips. Flow in between, right elbow to the knee, palm down overhead, side angle pose. And then inhale, lift back to Warrior Two, stay through that little pause. And then exhale, go through side angle pose. Stay through the little pause. On the inhale, you change, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. One more time, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. Lower the hands down to the inside of your foot. Lift the back heel now. So make your right shoulder and your right inner thigh come together. Hands as straight as possible, I mean, arms as straight as possible, palms flat, and look forward. Should be just a little bit different than what you might normally do here in this lunge and that's the point we're just trying to push outer arm bone into the inner thigh and inner thigh into the outer arm bone at the same time little change in habit to make us focus in a little bit more plank pose swing your right foot back until you find your full plank pose and then lower down, cobra on the inhale, and child's pose on your exhale. Walk your hands over towards the right side in that long reach and side body reach. 
Walk across the center on over to the second side. Inhale, bring the hands back to the middle. Rise through all fours so that the left foot can come through to that low lunge. Lift the back knee upright. Circle right heel down to the mat. Come all the way up, warrior two. Try not to lean forward, but keep the shoulders right over the line of the hips here. There's a little bit of a lean. Try to pull it back. Inhale here. Change on the exhale, elbow to knee, top arm, palm down overhead, reach. Do it again, come upright. And exhale. Inhale, come upright. Exhale, reach. Look down at the mat, come back to that low lunge. Being in the habit of repetitive movement, I can feel in the body, I forgot something. It's one thing that uh, the focus helps with as well. What was it? It's that airplane swing. So we've got to go lower in the left shoulder. Try to swing that left arm underneath. Take the right arm out to the side and hold. And then release it back, both hands to the mat. Place the palms flat down, make the arms absolutely straight and try to pull the chest forward and look through. Just those slight differences, like my regular low lunge might be with a little bend in both the knee and the arm. So I'm trying to go as straight as possible and then squeeze, make the inner thigh touch your outer arm bone and vice versa. Hold there, nice, strong and steady. And then loop it back to plank pose. Step the left foot back. Lower down to the mat. Peel through cobra. And downward facing dog. Walk your hands backwards again to your feet. Hang for just a moment. Reconnecting with breath, maybe through a couple of exhales out through the mouth. And slow roll up to standing. Here at the back end of the mat, pick up your right knee into the chest. Then kick it back behind you as you hinge forward. T-shape or warrior three, feel free to bend into that standing leg to make that work. And extend your arms first back behind you. And then change arms out in front of you. Bring hands to prayer right at the chest. Stand back up and pull the knee back into the chest. Without the use of your hands, knee out to the side, place the foot into tree pose. Right foot onto the left leg, tree pose. Let the hands separate a little bit with an inhale and stretch overhead. And as you find that little pause in between your breaths, can you place the palms back together? Next time on the exhale, let the palms separate, bring them back down to the chest. And in that pause in between breaths, they reconnect. Take 
Set two feet down to the mat. Do chair pose in between. Utkatasana. Take Utkatasana into a twist. Right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Back across your center, stand all the way up. Give the legs a little break. On the movement of the exhale, sit back down into the thighs. Connect the hands into that pause and then twist. This time left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. And twist, stand up, arms all the way to the sky. And just release the arms down by your side so you can come left knee up towards the chest. And then kick it back, bend in the standing leg enough to keep the hips square. Torso goes more forward. Extend the arms back at first. And then forward. Bring the palms to prayer, stand back up. Left knee in towards the chest, high, high, high. Turn the leg out to the side, knee points out to the side. Without the help of the hand, place the foot above or below the knee works. Push the heel into the leg, leg into the heel. Focusing in on the breath again as you take the inhale, hands come apart, stretch them up to the sky. A little pause in between, palms together. Stay there for a breath. And then again, hands separate as the movement of the breath happens. Palms come together in the pause. Usually that pause being barely perceptible, we're trying to find a little bit more room for it. Both feet back down to the mat. Again, Utkadasana, chair pose. This time, think forehead down to your knees, round the back, more like cat pose. Interlace the hands behind you. Squeeze your elbows towards each other. This might be a good stopping point, or you can go to straighter arms. Hands up towards the sky with the interlace of the palms. Keep rounding the back, forehead to the knees. I have my palms open so that I get a little bit more ease and room in the shoulders. If palms are closed and squeezing in, there'll be even a little bit more challenge. Release the hands wherever you are and again, sweep up to standing. Exhale, forward fold, and then walk your hands back out to downward facing dog. We'll do everything we've done today a little bit quicker. Take the right leg up into the air, three-legged dog. Step it all the way forward into the low lunge. Take right hand up to the sky in a twist. Lower the hand down and shift the legs back and forth. Keep the bend of the front knee. Set your left knee down. Walk the hands up to the front thigh and twist left elbow to the outside of the knee. You've done this slow. How does it work with the focus as you come in a little quicker? Back knee can go up. Keep the back knee lifted if you already have it. Untwist, hands down to the inside of the foot and try that airplane fly. You drop the right shoulder more. Both hands out to the side. Make that transition you right into warrior two. Spin the back heel down. Lift the torso high. 
exhale, elbow to knee, top arm, palm down overhead, side angle pose. Next inhale, lift back to warrior two. Exhale, side angle. One more time, warrior two. Side angle, but keep traveling all the way down to your low lunge. Step back to plank. Balance on your left hand, the outer edge of your left foot. Step your right foot forward in the kickstand. Take the right arm up to the sky and side plank with the kickstand. This can also be down on your left forearm instead of the hand. Like we did coming into warrior three, that right knee, now try to pick up the foot into your chest and then kick it straight out. Place the right foot into tree pose on the left leg. And then full plank, lower down to the mat, cobra, and downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths. Second side, lift the left leg high, three-legged dog. As you pull the knee into the chest, step it all the way through into your low lunge and then left hand up in the revolved lunge. Hand comes back down, switch the legs, shift the legs, I should say, back and forth. Set the back knee down, walk the hands up to the front thigh, nice long torso. Good, and then right elbow to the outside of the knee into your deeper twisted lunge. Palms together, back knee could stay down. Try it up if it works. The back knee is up, keep it there as you untwist. Hands come to the inside of your foot. Drop the left shoulder lower, airplane wings, left arm hooked under the thigh, right arm out to the side. Maybe working core here to set the back heel down, no hands the whole way as you come up to warrior two. Yeah, nicely done. Take in the breath, focus. Feel that pause in warrior two, and then change to side angle. Come up, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. Warrior two. This time as you're going through side angle, keep the movement all the way going down, change to plank. Uh, lower down to the mat, Co cobra, peel the chest up, and we're downward facing dog. Be on the right hand, outer edge of the right foot, step your left foot forward into that side plank with the kickstand, left arm up to the sky. Pull the left knee even higher towards the chest so the foot comes off of the floor. And then kind of like a starburst, send it straight. Place the foot into tree pose, left foot onto your right leg. And again, into full plank. Lower down, you get a double vinyasa on this side. Come through Cobra, downward facing dog.
This time I want us to look forward to the hands, step or jump to the front end of the mat. Lift up halfway, forward fold, chair pose, bend the knees, sit into those thighs, extend the arms long. Stand all the way up. Great palms to the center. Bring the focus back to the breath. Next, inhale, sweep the arms back up to the sky. Look just straight ahead, lift your heels off of the ground. Stand as tall as you can, squeeze your glutes, try to hold the balance there. Heels up, bend the knees and start to sit low, low, low. Heels, uh, heels and butt towards each other here in a low squat. Bring the arms down to shoulder height instead of overhead. Transition as softly as you can to sit down onto your mat. At some point there's just a drop, yeah. Boat pose, so the arms still about shoulder height and then send the legs out. Bend the knees more to keep it out of the hip flexors. Straighten the legs as works for you. Hold it here for a count of 10. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together. Point your knees out to the side and let your body fold over. Then come back upright, set the soles of your feet to your mat and as wide as the mat. So right foot all the way over to the right edge and vice versa. And then just hips, let both knees fall over towards the right side. At first, using your hands back behind you to help here. Looking at mobility in the hips, just back and forth, little windshield wiper. And then I want you to try this without the use of the hands. So you're a little bit more upright and switching from side to side. Really focusing in on what's a little bit different. How does the habit change? What does the body need to do to compensate without the use of the hands and this movement of the hips? And like slowly crawling towards the front of the mat. Next time, both legs are over towards your right side. Set the hands on either side of that front knee and twist and look back over your right shoulder. And then turn the head so you're looking over your front shoulder, your left shoulder. And as you do that, can you focus in on breathing into your left hip? Mine's always a little lifted or a lot lifted there as I do this. Focus in on breath, lowering it down, feeling a little bit more grounded, less ask. Try to keep that and fold all the way over that right thigh. Of course, flexibility and mobility go together, but here we're really thinking more about mobility. So if this isn't the biggest stretch in your life, don't worry about it. Then you'll walk back up right in the torso and flip the legs all the way over. Try it with no hands. Change that habit a little bit. Over towards the left side. And then hands kind of split that left knee. Change my direction. 
just for sake of camera, and look over your back shoulder, your left shoulder here. And then just a slow change, look over your front shoulder, chin stays tucked and down. And can you make the back hip heavier? Try to sit into it a little bit. And then keeping that back hip heavier, low down to the ground, fold over the left thigh. Again here, focusing in on the little differences. If I even kind of sway a little bit with the breath, weight goes forward and back into the left, what I'm calling the front leg. And then each exhale, trying to sit heavier towards the back leg. A lot of times pigeon is a little too much for folks and that's a good variation with both knees bent. All right, bring the torso back up. Get out of this just by swinging the legs towards the front, little pat. Seated forward fold. And then lie all the way down onto your back. Pull the knees into your chest as you do so. And let both knees fall over towards the right side in our supine twist. Hands out to the full T if you have the room and availability there. And change, knees go across the center, over to the left side. And bring it back to the middle yourself a nice tight squeeze and hug and then release to your final resting pose if you want shavasana lying down on the back or if you prefer a seat of meditation this is your time to kind of wiggle out and find your place Whether you're lying back or seated, I ask you to make connection with your hands over the body. And draw your focus again back to that slow inhale. In particular, seeing that little pause and space before you exhale. A little space before the next breath. Your habit might have been to not have those pauses. So focusing on how to create just a little bit more space in each breath. At certain points in the day, like in your yoga practice, the movement, the asana practice.
so that perhaps that more lengthened breath with the gaps creeps into the subconscious habit throughout the day. If you're lying back, now's a good time to come back to a seated position. Hands can now just rest along your thighs or palms together as you wish to close us out. That's a way of sending the goodness that we found here on our yoga mat out into the rest of the day, letting that focus transfer. We'll close in the sound of Om. As always, sing along, listen, or tune it out. Empty the breath and take a deep breath in. abundant gratitude to you, each other, and this practice. Namaste.